On the 24th of February, 2022, Russian President Vladimir Putin ordered Russian troops to invade Ukraine. The European Union, as well as its member states, reacted swiftly and adopted the wide range of sanctions, targeting Russian government, financial institutions, state-owned companies, as well as President Putin and his inner circle. In a government statement on the 27th of February, German Chancellor Olaf Scholz spoke about a turning point in history while announcing military and financial aid to the Ukraine and extra funding for the German armed forces. These are major shifts in German and European foreign and defense policies. In this short series, views on Russia's attack on Ukraine, we see how countries around the world are reacting to the war in Europe. My name is Jan Leino and I work at the Konrad Arnold Foundation's Multinational Development Policy Dialogue in Brussels. For today's discussion, I have the pleasure of greeting uh, Stefan Malerius. Uh, Stefan is EU Program Manager at Konrad Arnold Stiftung's headquarter in, in Berlin. Uh, KAS is currently implementing several EU-funded programs in the South Caucasus region, which aims to foster dialogue between the countries as, as well as with uh, Europe. Hello, Stefan. How are you? Fine. Thank you, uh, Janne. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Thank you for joining us uh, today. Stefan, uh, Georgia, Azerbaijan, Armenia, all very different countries with different backgrounds. Uh, how have these countries taken up the uh, Russian aggression in Ukraine? Uh, countries, they, they form a region which is uh, pretty close to the uh, conflict zone to, to Ukraine. Being a region on the one hand uh, doesn't mean that uh, the regions are very different uh, country by country. So um, if we look a little bit at the different countries, Georgia uh, comes into mind first. It's, uh, it's like you mentioned, the closest country as well to Ukraine. Georgia had a war with Russia 2008. Um, how has the, uh, the, the country perceived the, uh, the aggression? Well, the country is in its uh, uh, reaction split into the population on the one hand that is um, traditionally uh, historically, I would even say very close to Ukraine. Uh, Ukrainian and Georgians, they have uh, a lot of things uh, in, in, in common, and there were a lot of mass protests uh, in support to Ukraine after the war broke out. On the other hand, uh, you have a government that is, um, at least by the opposition, also um, often uh, called uh, as being a pro-Russian uh, uh, government uh, for already more than uh, almost 10 years now, and um, this uh, government uh, took a very cautious stand, so uh, it did not join the sanctions uh, against Russia that, that, that were imposed by the West, uh, and it uh, tried to avoid um, condemning Russia openly. So Georgia has now applied for EU membership uh, almost simultaneously with Ukraine. So how do you explain the discrepancy, like you said, uh, the, the carefulness uh, on, on condemning um, Russia's uh, aggression, but simultaneously openly applying for the European Union? How does this fit together? The Georgian government, of course, understands the mood of the population, and the mood of the population is uh, for years, for the, for the decade already, very pro-European. Uh, and uh, pro-Ukraine at the current moment. So um, uh, when being hesitant in condemning uh, the Russian aggression, they needed at least admit and, and show it, uh, that, that they are still pro-European and they don't want to change the European path. Otherwise, they would have had uh, internal problems with the protests that are, that are sort of fueled by, by the opposition uh, calling the government pro-Russians from Georgia to Armenia, a very different country, also very different background. Uh, there's a Russian base in Armenia, which is widely publicized. In Europe, we even had this uh, disinformation campaign, uh, or it proved to be a disinformation that uh, Armenia is sending jets and pilots uh, to fight on the Russian side. How has Armenian government reacted, uh, or the people there, like you mentioned in Georgia, uh, how have they reacted on this uh, aggression or the war? Yeah, unlike Georgia, there were no mass protests uh, um, against uh, the invasion of uh, Russia to Ukraine. The government uh, tried to tried hard to take a neutral stance, which was which was uh, very uh, difficult to maintain because they they are they were under enormous pressure from the Russian side, diplomatically, uh, but uh, they are at the same time deeply dependent on Russia in military and in economic terms. So therefore, um, abstaining, uh, for example, in the EU uh, General Assembly voting on the war in Ukraine cost uh, a lot of efforts for Armenia because they were under, under heavy pressure from the Russian side to join forces with them diplomatically. 
many people are leaving um, uh, Russia uh, now. Um, Georgia is a neighboring country to Russia. Armenia is a close ally. Has this been seen in the civil society or, or has this been seen in the, in, in the politics? Well, it is having, of course, on both countries, uh, enormous impact. Uh, so currently uh, around 10, 15, 20,000 Russians went to exile to both uh, Armenia and, uh, and Georgia for different reasons. Uh, a lot of um, middle-class Russians that uh, had business with the West uh, and couldn't access their accounts and get paid uh, in, in Russia, they needed to relocate that business to uh, Armenia, first of all. Uh, and uh, when it comes to the Russians uh, going to Georgia, they are uh, often for political reasons there. If you protest in Russia against the war, then you have uh, immediately problems and uh, you're facing prison terms or, or have heavy fines uh, in uh, in order to escape this. Uh, a lot of Russians just, just sent to uh, went to Georgia to, to in a way, uh, take political asylum there. Not officially, but in de facto. Armenia is, is heavily depending um, on Russia. Um, how do you see Russia's role now in the region with these international sanctions on the, on the other hand, uh, as well as in inner politics or, or politics within Armenia? Is, is Russia gaining influence or is, is Russia losing influence uh, in the region? Probably a little bit early to, to, uh, to judge because um, when it comes to the concrete uh, Russian uh, footprint actually in the region, it is mainly related to the uh, so-called uh, or unresolved, I would say, not 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 any more frozen conflicts, unresolved conflicts, meaning uh, the um, territories disputed uh, that are occupied by the Russians when it comes to Georgia, uh, so Abkhazia and South Ossetia, and controlled in a way or overseen by Russian peacekeepers uh, when it comes to Nagorno-Karabakh. We have heard uh, in the last days that the Russian troops that are stationed there, or the peacekeepers, they are removed now from there. What uh, this means, will mean, uh, this is uh, at, at the present moment hard to say. We have seen Azerbaijani forces um, moving forward and occupying an Armenian-controlled village that is on Azerbaijani territory. Uh, and there were shellings and, and, and fightings and Armenian soldiers uh, were killed and uh, both sides uh, accused the Russian peacekeepers not fulfilling their duties. Um, but how this will evolve uh, if Russia is sort of uh, withdrawing or drawing back uh, the, and, and whether they will really lose influence which currently seems to be the case, this is at the present moment hard to say. It took us already to the third country in the region, so, so Azerbaijan and, and, and through the Nagorno-Karabakh conflict there. So how, how has the reaction in, in Azerbaijan been? Uh, like you mentioned, uh, Russia is heavily backing Armenia on the Nagorno-Karabakh um, issue. How has Azerbaijan taken up uh, the conflict or reacted to the conflict in Ukraine? It is also uh, difficult to describe in two, two, two three sentences. Uh, because on the one hand, uh, Azerbaijani people are very sympathetic, similar to the, to the Georgian, uh, uh, towards uh, Ukraine. So there were also, uh, which is quite unusual for Azerbaijan, protests on the streets, and they were allowed actually by the authorities in support to Ukraine. Uh, and uh, on the official side, uh, the, the, the government is providing a, a lot of humanitarian assistance to Ukraine. Azerbaijani uh, oil company Soka is providing free oil uh, through their uh, stations in the Ukraine to the Ukrainian army and so on. But at the same time, they are also cautious in their official uh, reaction towards uh, the, the war on the di diplomatical uh, scene, for example, in uh, the the UN, uh, UN General Assembly voting and the voting on the uh, exclusion of Russia from the Council of Europe, they simply did not participate. We we, we, start, we talk a little bit about Russians, uh, Russian role now in the Caucasus. There's another uh, regional power player there, Turkey, um, who has been uh, very active in the, the peace talks between uh, um, Ukraine and Russia, but also is a heavy backer of, of, of Azerbaijan. Um, so how do you see that the cooperation between Turkey uh, and Azerbaijan and Armenia, Russia, uh, being affected by this crisis, or is there any effect on that? Yeah, very interesting question uh, and, and, and very interesting topic. Uh, because um, on the one hand, you rightly mentioned that there's a close um, cooperation and relation between uh, Turkey and Azerbaijan. They talk about uh, 
two countries and one army, for example. And of course, uh, um, Turkey was instrumental in uh, supporting Azerbaijan in the war uh, with Armenia in 2020. Uh, at the same time, uh, Turkey had has uh, well, a, um, a pretty significant uh, ambitions to to unify uh, Turkish countries under its uh, sort of supervision. Azerbaijan being the first, but uh, then they they want to build bridges also to the Turk countries in the Central Asia, and uh, Russia is a very uh, sort of uh, viciously. Uh, looking at, at uh, what, what Turkey is doing uh, when it comes to uh, Turkish minorities on the uh, Russian territory itself. And at the same time, what is also interesting, there are now negotiations between Armenia and Turkey about getting back to normal relations, opening the borders and uh, re-establishing uh, diplomatic ties which would, if uh, this happened, push back the Russian influences in, in the South Caucasus, because uh, Turkey is then becoming an even more um, prominent role in, in this region. We're conducting this interview from, from, from Brussels, so I need to ask a little bit about the European Union's role uh, and, and how do you see that uh, in the future. So like, like we mentioned earlier, Georgia has already applied for a EU membership. We're talking in Europe about getting uh, independent from Russian fossil fuels, meaning gas and oil. Azerbaijan has, has, has those. Um, we talked about the Russian influence in Armenia. So w- what, from your point of view, should European Union or, or the European countries uh, do? in order to gain influence and support the countries in their development? I would uh, name a couple of points. First of all, uh, Georgia is being an associated uh, country for for the EU uh, and uh, implementing association agreement and a deep comprehensive uh, free trade agreement with the EU for eight years already. So now it through this application of becoming a member, signal that it wants to enter a, a different stage, it want to become shift or tra- transfer to another level together with Moldova and uh, Ukraine. I think the EU should now think of what are uh, new op- uh, offers that they can put forward towards uh, this association tree, as it's called. With as a, as a Bajan, the EU needs to finalizing a new sort of partnership agreement that is probably um, focusing on uh, economic issues. And as you rightly mentioned, uh, Azerbaijan could be very important uh, when it comes to this, uh, the question of diversification of um, uh, energy supplies for Europe. Uh, this should be taken into account, but uh, it should not be uh, forgotten that we, we, we do have European values. And uh, Azerbaijan, you could probably say it is an authoritarian country for, for quite some years. Widening and deepening the um, uh, relation between Azerbaijan and Europe is of both interest, I think. And then Europe should not forget Armenia, of course, uh, because uh, the Armenian political elite and the government under uh, Pashinyan is having genuine uh, interest in intensifying the relation with Europe, um, which would uh, help the country become maybe a little bit less dependent on Russia. Thank you uh, very much, uh, Stefan, for this uh, short talk uh, today. Uh, I, I wish you good luck in, 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 in um, continuing with working and dialogue programs in, in South Caucasus in this, I think, uh, strategically important region, uh, an even more important region uh, for Europe in the future. Thank you for listening to today's uh, episode on views on Russia's attack on Ukraine, where we talked about the reactions in Armenia, Azerbaijan and Georgia. Please follow our social media channels for newest updates and for further episodes in this series. Thank you.